3.5 trigonometry, we're going to review mostly the unit circle and some trig identities. Here are the graphs of just sine and cosine. Obviously there's tangent, cosecant, secant, um, but I only limited these notes to just these two as a refresher. Um, we have some reciprocal identities, basically like sine is equal to 1 over cosecant. Um, and tangent is equal to sine over cosine, etc. The Pythagorean identities, sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1. Or, in other words, um, y, oh, I can't write. There you go. y squared plus x squared equals 1, because that's basically what this is. Um, and then double angle formulas, uh, this one comes up a lot. Okay, so example one, prove the following identities. So you should have done this in pre-calculus. Um, and the basic idea is to make the left look like the right side of the uh, function, equation, whatever you want to call it. So I'm going to start manipulating the sine over the tangent x, sine x over tangent x. And I'm going to try to make that look like, or simplify it as much as I possibly can, so that it is equal to cosine x. So, um, this one is a fairly simple problem, okay? So sine and tangent. Uh, the relationships are, if you look back on top there of your notes, tangent is equal to sine over cosine. So that's what I'm going to work with first. So um, in order to do that, I'm going to go ahead and separate this. This is just being divided. So sine of x divided by the tangent of x is the same as sine of x multiplied by 1 over tangent x. So all, all I did was I moved the sine out of the fraction. That's it. Okay? Um, and then... Uh, okay. So then, like I said, tangent is sine over cosine. So now I have a fraction inside of a fraction. That's no bueno, right? That doesn't work. You should have learned sometime in middle school, I believe, that um, you can't do that. I think so. Anyway, um, so what I'm going to do is I am going to flip this around. 1 divided by the sine of or sorry, 1 divided by sine x over cosine x is the same as saying 1 multiplied by the reciprocal of that fraction. So, sine x times, okay, so 1 divided by all of this is now 1 multiplied by the reciprocal, which is cosine x over sine x. Okay, so listen to what I'm saying. Um, this is basically 1, you know what, I'll do it in another color, and then I'll erase it. So this is basically 1 divided by sine over cosine. Okay, in middle school you learned that when you divide fractions, and yes, 1 can be considered a fraction even though it's a whole number, the important thing is that sine over cosine is a fraction. Uh, when you divide fractions, you're going to multiply by the reciprocal. So you keep the 1 the same, and then you multiply, and then sine over cosine becomes cosine over sine. And of course, anything multiplied by 1 is still that same thing. Um, so I'm left with just cosine over sine. And that's all I did here. Um, I made this into cosine over sine, just using division. Alright, so back over here. Sine x times cosine x, ooh, over sine x. See, if I just look at these like this, those sines, they cross each other out because um, they're cross, what's it called? Cross simplifying? Um, so what I'm left with is just cosine. Ooh, isn't that what we we're trying to get? We we're trying to make sure that all we ended up with was cosine of x on both sides, and we did. Alright, B, same idea, 
same thing. Um, you have to find the relationship. Now sine. I can change sine into um, 1 over cosecant. But is that going to help me get it to cosine? Maybe, maybe not. Um, but cotangent, I know cotangent, like tangent, is made up of sine and cosine. See, tangent is sine over cosine, but cotangent is the opposite, the reciprocal. It's cosine over sine. So let me see. Cotangent, right, the reciprocal of that, or one of the um, reciprocal identities, is that it's cosine of x over sine of x, and then multiply by sine of x. And then remember, we're trying to make this look like cosine of x. So now, you can see the sines, they cross out again. And now I'm left with cosine of x equals cosine of x. And this one was a lot easier, right? Okay, C. Um, 1 over secant squared x plus 1 over cosine squared x equals 1. Ah. Uh. Well, let's see, 1 over secant. Didn't I just say a while ago that 1 over secant is sine, or cosine? Sorry. No, I said 1 over cosecant was sine. That's what I said. But either way, they work the same way. 1 over secant is cosine. So 1 over secant squared just means that I'm going to end up with cosine squared. Right? So this right here became this. And then for the next one, I'm going to do the exact same thing. 1 over cosecant is sine. So 1 over cosecant squared is going to be sine squared. And we're trying to make the left equal 1, right? This is what we're trying to make both sides look like, 1. So then I look at back at my Pythagorean identities. And cosine squared plus sine squared, these babies are supposed to equal 1. So there we go. All right, D, tangent x times the quantity cotangent x plus tangent x equals secant squared x. Okay, so secant, I need to make this look like secant squared x. All right, so to start off, um, you can change stuff. Um, you could multiply out the tangent. Yeah? Okay, so I'm going to do that. I see a pair of uh, parentheses, and I see an, you know, so an expression, a term outside of these parentheses. Usually, uh, my gut's always going to be like, ooh, distribute. So I'm going to have tangent, oopsie, that doesn't look right. That's better, tangent x, cotangent x, right? Multiply the tangent and the cotangent, plus tangent times tangent, to tangent squared. Okay, and then, of course, this is our goal. Alright, so, hmm. Well, tangent and cotangent, they're reciprocals of each other. So, basically, they just cancel each other out. And I'll show you how. I'll do this color coded. Okay, tangent is sine over cosine. And then cotangent, um, cotangent is cosine over sine. So this is what's happening here, right? And then plus tangent squared x. And we're still trying to make it look like secant squared x. All right, so, hmm, oh look, sine, cosine, they cancel each other out. What am I left with? I'm left with 1. Because basically 1 divided by 1 times 1 divided by 1. And then plus tangent squared x, and it should equal secant squared x. Oh, and then if you look up, at your Pythagorean identities, there is one that says 1 plus tangent squared x equals secant squared x. So this stuff on the left is supposed to equal secant squared x, 
which makes both sides of the equation equal. Example 2, find each value without a calculator. You are required to be able to find the values of um, angles using sine, cosine, tangent um, without a calculator. So you do have to have the unit circle memorized to a certain degree. Um, so very quickly, the unit circle, there are certain track, um, angles that are important. They're the reference angles and they are they are 30 degrees, 45 degrees, and 60 degrees. And then you should know every 90 degree angle. So like, well, starting at zero, so that you should know 90, you should know 180, and you should know 270. Um, and 2 pi, um, which is 360, is the same as the zero anyway. Okay, so I'm gonna draw up my angles very quickly. Okay, so we have my 30, 40, 60, but in this class you need to become familiar with the radians um, only because yes, you need to have your calculator in radian mode whenever you are actually allowed to use a calculator and all of the degrees will 95% of the time be in radians. So 30 degrees is actually pi over 6 um, and then, oh, I just realized I wrote 40 degrees or maybe I wrote 5 and it just doesn't look like it. I'll fix that in a second. Um, 45 degrees is pi over 4. And then um, 60 degrees is pi over 3. Okay. Okay, I gave myself a little more space because now I'm going to write down the uh, coordinates. Okay, so... The coordinates, this is just a graph. This is the x, um, what do you call it? Oh boy. The x-axis, right, right here. This is the y-axis. And the idea of the unit circle, it is a circle with a radius of one unit. Which means this is centered exactly at zero, zero. Right, this right here is zero, zero. And then it, there's just one unit to the right, which is why this coordinate is... Um, one zero. All right, so working with that, um, the next coordinate is going to be one unit up, um, but it's located at x equals zero, so this is zero one, and then no, so that's here. Then the next one, which is right here, um, this is one unit to the left, and the x's on the left are negative, so this is negative one, and then last down here. Uh, this is one unit down. So it's negative one. Or, oops. Let me erase that. So it is zero, negative one. So then we're found, we're, we have to find these coordinates here, here, and here, right? And the idea is you could use trigonometry because um, this is the unit circle, which means the radius is one unit long. So if I treat this as a, or if I use that radius, which is one unit long, and then I decide, okay, well, I'm trying to figure out how many units to the right to get to this point up here, and then how many units down, or up, sorry, which is the y, right? Um, my coordinates, to, uh, see, I'm trying to find this here. So the coordinates are x and y. x is how many units to the right and y is how many units up or down. In this case up. We could use trigonometry. We could make this into a, oh look, it's a triangle. It's a right triangle. And not just any right triangle. It has a hypotenuse of 1. Um, so then we have our x and our y. And we could find this because, oh, we have an angle which is pi over 6, right, or 30 degrees. And then this is the opposite, and this is the adjacent to the angle. And we could find those one at a time using cosine, sine, and, um, and or tangent, but whichever. Well, we can't use tangent because we don't know both of them. So you can use cosine and sine. Now we could do that every single time if we chose. Why? Why would you want to do all of the work? That's why it's actually very important just to learn what the unit circle stands for. And then after that, memorize the degrees please, or the radians rather.
Okay, because we're not going to sit here and do make a triangle every single time that we want coordinates. Okay, for example, the 45 degree. Oh, look, so here and down here and here, there's my other right triangle. Right? Um, you did a circle of one. This is 45 degrees or pi over 4 radians. I should use a pi over 4 radians. Do, do, do. Pi over 4. I'm a geometry teacher, so I get hooked on the degrees. Um, and then this is my x, this is my y, Ooh, this is my opposite, this is my adjacent. I could just find the coordinates. Okay, that's all this is. The unit circle is just a really small circle with a radius of one unit. And then you can make triangles out of any angle and find the coordinates. Okay. Okay, so here's um, a technique I found online somewhere. Um, the coordinates. Okay, well, we all know that coordinates usually get written into um, parentheses, right? And um, they also happen to be all fractions. And um, all of these fractions are actually written um, as a fraction of 2. So to start off, all of the coordinates are divided by 2. OK? So for pi over 3, pi over 4, and pi over 6. They're just all fractions divided by 2. And then the next step would be um, the, the numerators. Well, the numerators all happen to be square rooted. Every single one. Okay, so they're all square rooted. Wow. Last step. Start from the 60, the pi over 3. Start with the x and go down to the next two x uh, coordinates and then start from the bottom and work with the y's. And all you have to do is count to three. So one, two, three. And then start from here and count again to three. One, two, three. These are the coordinates. Now, the only catch is the square root of 1 is 1. So you really don't need the square root, uh, but it, it's, still, it's still correct. It's 1 half, um, and well, for pi over 3, it's just the x is 1 half, and the y is the square root of 3 over 2. For 45 degrees, or pi over 4, the coordinates are the same. And then for 30 degrees, or pi over 6, they're just um, the opposite of the 60 degrees. Now, if you know those, and you know the other four, then you can do this without any issues. Um, I never did write the other angles. Um, so this is 0. Oh, let me do it in black. My 0 and 2 pi. Um, this up here the, is 90 degrees, which is just pi. I'll write it here, I suppose. And then, so, oh, <laughs> pi over 2, sorry. Okay, so it's just pi over 2. And then, so, you just add another pi over 2. So that's 2 pi over 2, which is just pi. And then um, just add another pi over 2. So that's 1 and a half pi's, or 3 pi over 2. And then other, add another pi over 2. So that's um, 4 pi's over 2, which is just 2 pi. So basically, every single wedge is a pi over 2, or half a pi. So half a pi plus another half a pi is a whole pi, right? Um, the top is one entire pi. The bottom, and let me explain what I'm talking about when I say top and bottom. Right, so this right here, and this, is one entire pie. Now I know, you must be thinking, no, 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 I have eaten apple pie before, it is an entire circle. Well, the unit circle, just the top half, right? Those two wedges, 
that's one entire pi. So now if you look at it that way, and you cut this up into, let's see, yeah, okay. If you cut this up into six pieces, right? So here's one. Oh, oops. Okay, well, let's just say pi over six is one piece. And then from the pi over six all the way to the pi over three, that's another piece. And then from the pi over three to the pi over two, that's another piece. So I cut that into three wedges, and then I cut this over here into three wedges also, right? Well, look, I have six wedges, right? Ignore the 45 degrees for right now. In fact, I'll just make it disappear for the moment, okay? Um, so we have, oh look, six, six wedges. So every 30 degrees is 1 sixth. So um, the first one is pi over 6. So this is 1. Now let me. So 1. Hello. Right. 1. Oh, haha, <laughs> it's yellow. 1. So this is 2 pi over 6, which if you were to reduce it, 2 pi over 6 is pi over 3. This is 3. 3 pi over 6. That's 1 half pi, right? So half of pi, pi over 2. Uh, so here is 4 pi over 6. So 4 pi over 6. Oh, I can reduce that. 2 goes into both of them. So this is 2 pi over 3. Um, so this is 5 pi over 6. Can't reduce that. So this is 5 pi over 6. And then the next one, 6. Oh, 6 pi over 6. 6 pi over 6 is, oh, pi. I hope you can see the pattern, right? And then you, you could just keep going. So as you can see, I continued it, and I found um, the other coordinates. And now the idea would be that I could do the same exact thing with the 45 degree. Okay, 45 degrees is cutting into quarters. Um, but then that's how you would find the, um, the coordinates. Because if it's associated with 30 degrees, then it has the exact same coordinates. Um, if it's associated with 45 degrees, it has the exact same coordinates. Um, if it's associated with the 60, the same coordinates. The only difference is the signs. In the first quadrant, everything's positive. In the second quadrant, um, the x's are negative. In the third quadrant, um, the everything is negative. <laughs> and in the fourth quadrant, um, the y's are negative. And hopefully you remember that stuff. So I went ahead and added those. So I'm going to clean this up a little, um, but I did want you to see, for example, um, here I have 6 pi over 6, which is just pi, and I have others. Now, anything with a 6 still in it that I couldn't reduce, that is going to be associated with pi over 6. Now, um, the next one here, see this? I got 8 pi over 6, that can be reduced to pi over 3. So now that's associated with the 60. And I don't need this one right here. I don't, oopsie. That was, oh, wrong button. Okay, there we go. Better. All right, um, let's see. I don't need this one. And I'm just going to go ahead and get rid of the ones I don't need. Now, it would be necessary to do the exact same thing with the 45 degree angle. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. So here are where my 45 degree angles would be. So now I've successfully cut this up into um, fours, right? The top half is cut up into four wedges, um, and the bottom half is as well. And I highlighted it so you could see it better. Um, but so now if you think about it, um, if the first wedge, the green wedge, right? So if that's just one, that's one pi, right? Divided by four, so that's one fourth. Um, so then this is two fourths, right? Which is pi over two. Then this is 3 fourths, oh, look, so 3 fourths pi, or 3 pi over 4, same thing. And then this is 4, so 4 pi over 4, which is a whole, okay? And then you'd continue, this is 5, so 5 pi over 4. And I'm finding the ones that I haven't found yet, okay? You, the 30s and the 60s, if you do all the 30s, the 60s will get taken care of. But for the 45s, you actually have to do those separately.
And then, so this is 6, and then this is 7, so this is 7 pi over 4, um, and then this is 8, okay? Um, so, there you go, there's the whole unit circle. Um, so now I'm just going to bring everything back and get rid of all the extras, and um, we're going to actually answer these questions finally. Alright, so, almost done. Um, this ran a little long because I went over the unit circle, so sorry. Okay, so, uh, real quick, sign. Sine is the y coordinate. Cosine is the x coordinate. Tangent is sine over cosine, so it's y divided by x. And then sine again is the y coordinate. So the, that's what we're looking at. Okay, because sine is the direction up um, in our triangles. It was the opposite, right? So sine is opposite. Okay, so y. All right, so sine of pi over 2. So I look for pi, pi over 2, and the y coordinate at pi over 2, which is right here, is 1. So there's my answer. B, cosine, 4 pi over 3. So i got to look for 4 pi over 3. And here's 4 pi over 3. And 4 pi over 3, right, the 3 is an indicator that it goes with the 60. Um, so the pi over 3. So the x coordinate is 1 half. But what quadrant is this in? This is in the um, third quadrant. In the third quadrant, everything is negative. So these coordinates should have been negative. All right, C, pi over 2, um, so y over x, so that's 1 over 0, and we do not divide by 0. It is mathematically um, undefined, okay? And then D, 7 pi over 4, so let's see, 7 pi over 4, well, I know that pi over 4, the coordinates are square root of 2 over 2, but see, 7 pi over 4 is here, and in this quadrant, my y's are negative. 